Okay, after you have a domain name, your next step is to get a web hosting account. Now, there are a lot of web hosts out there. There's actually entire websites out there dedicated to doing nothing but comparing different hosting companies. So it can it, it can get pretty confusing. Uh, there's also a lot of different features on these things, a lot of different uh, terminology. So it can be a confusing experience choosing web hosting. My recommendation to you in order to avoid a lot of the headaches is to go with HostGator. Now the good thing about HostGator is that their rates are quite affordable to anybody just starting out. Uh, not only that, they have really, really good support. Now this is one reason why I have recommended not to go with GoDaddy, by the way, because I've heard issues about GoDaddy's hosting support. Um, I have not heard such issues with HostGator. In fact, I've heard exactly the opposite. I've heard, I've heard about great stories dealing with uh, the, the support people over a HostGator. So I, I'm really confident in recommending this company to anybody just starting out um, on the web. Um, you know, as you, your site grows, you can grow along with HostGator because they can upgrade you into more powerful accounts all within their own company. Or you can always look into transferring your site to another more, you know, larger web hosting company in the future. But um, that's not something you need to worry about right now, most likely. If you're just starting out and you do not have a hosting account, simply sign up for HostGator. Now, we're looking at the HostGator homepage here. Uh, you'll see it, you'll see that it says starting at three dollars ninety six uh, a month. Now they they got a twenty percent thing going right now. I don't know how long that's going to be there. Um, and only that, it's also if you prepay by like a long time. That's like three years ahead of time. Um, if you go with just a standard month by month thing, right now it's seven dollars and sixteen cents a month. Now that's again that twenty percent off. So just do the math. It's it's like eight or nine bucks a month typically for the hosting account. Now, if you're just starting out, this little standard hatchling plan will probably work just fine for you. Now, if you want to be able to put uh, f uh, more domains on your account, like let's say you want to have more than one domain name and point it at your website, or if you want to have basically more than one website, you might want to go for a little bit of a, of a stiffer plan. They call it the baby plan because it's still pretty darn cheap. I mean, with their discount, it's seven ninety six, so I'm guessing it's in the neighborhood of about ten bucks a month for that. Typically, still it's dirt cheap. It's not you know really really cheap. Um, and then you can go for the business plan, which has some more stuff. Now, uh, let me click on this just to run you through a few of their hosting options. Um, they have unlimited disk space. That's fine because the typical blog probably isn't going to use a whole lot, so that's fine. Now. They have unlimited bandwidth. Now, in some cases, I would actually, this would be a red flag to me because typically unlimited bandwidth, um, I mean, basically, well, first of all, in case you don't know, bandwidth is simply the, uh, the data moving out of the web server, uh, you know, transferring over to other people's computers. Now, so let's say when something is moving, uh, looks like there's somebody mowing the darn lawn outside my door here. <laughs> uh, when, when uh, let's say you have a uh, a file on your server that was one megabyte in size, which is not going to happen most of the time. Every single time that, that that somebody downloads that one megabyte file off of your computer, that's going to be one megabyte of of bandwidth. Um, if ten people download that one megabyte file, well, that's going to be ten megabytes of bandwidth. So what they're saying is they're going to give you unlimited bandwidth. Now, in the real world, it's not really going to be unlimited. I mean, this is the case with all web hosts. Basically, if your site becomes a real bandwidth hog, eventually they're going to ask you to upgrade to a to a you know a better account because what happens is you're going all the other sites that are on that server with you are going to be suffering because your site is taking up so much resources. So, but if you're first starting out, this unlimited bandwidth is fine, and you'll you should do fine with HostGator. Now, domains allow. If you're only going to have one domain, the Hatchling plan works. If you want to have more than one, you can go for a higher plan. Uh, Toll-free number, you're probably not going to need. Dedicated IP, and S don't worry about these things. Basically, SSL just means that you can do secure. Uh, transactions on your account. So if you want, if you do HTTPS 
on your web thing, then basically you can process credit cards, things like that. Um, if you're not going to be processing credit cards on your domain, it doesn't even matter uh, that, that you have SSL or not, so I really wouldn't worry about that. And, and if you go with the options that I would later recommend to you for processing credit cards and things like that, if you go that route, uh, you're really not going to need SSL anyway, because I recommend you use something else. Um, so all this other stuff is just stuff that they've got, 99% uh, uptime. You'll see that in a lot of web hosting companies. Um, you have 45 days to change your mind on HostGator and just decide you don't like them, and you can cancel. Um, subdomains, uh, all these FTP accounts. We've talked about FTP in this guide already. WordPress hosting, so that's really, really important because you can do WordPress, which is important. Um, they have MySQL and PHP, which is you, obviously you're going to need that for um, WordPress. All this other stuff they've got there, just just look at it and go cross side and go, okay, that's cool, and then move on because it's really not that important that all this stuff is there. I mean, it's great that you can do it. That's all you need to know. Um, email, of course it does email. Control panel, you, yeah, you've got a, your own control panel there and you can do a lot of cool stuff. That's one of the reasons I recommend HostGator to you is because they have that control panel which automates a lot of things for you. You don't need to be a technically inclined person to use this, which is why I'm recommending it. Um, they've got stats, that's all well and good. So basically, they've got a lot of features here with these plans. Um, for most people, I think the hatchling or the baby plan will work fine. If you want something a little bit more robust with the toll-free number and stuff, go ahead and get the business plan. It's still pretty cheap. Um, also up here at the top, just to, just to mention it, you don't need the dedicated. We had talked about that in this guide earlier. You don't need the dedicated server, even though they can do it. So just realize you do have a growth path with HostGator. If your, if your site gets a lot bigger, you, do, you don't have to necessarily change companies. And uh, VPS hosting, which is called virtual private server. Um, again, you don't really, in, in most cases, need to worry much about that. Uh, it basically, it's a way of, of using software to mimic a dedicated server in a way, but it's not really a full dedicated server. Uh, again, not to get too technical, but you really don't need to worry about VPS hosting in most cases. If you find out later down the road, after you've already got your blog set up and, and you're moving along, that you want to, to get into some VPS hosting and you learn a little bit more about it, then you can move your site into that. HostGator can help you do that. So, you know, any plan that you choose here, you're not stuck with it. So that's cool. So anyway, that's my recommendation to you for web hosting, HostGator.